Hello dear students, how are you all? A warm and hearty welcome to all of you to Classroom TV. So this uh, for class 7th, this is your first class at Classroom TV for physics and we extend our warmest welcome to all of you. Physics is very interesting topic, very interesting subject. What is meaning of physics first of all? And let's remove the fear of physics. So, physics, its literal meaning is something which is physical. Physics means study of the things which are physical and by physical we means something which exists. Anything which exists in nature, in this universe is physical. Means you can feel it, you can experience it, you can see it, you can hear it, anything which, can, which you can see, hear, feel or experience that is called as physical and study of that is called as physics. Another meaning of physics is study of nature, like ancient Greeks called the study of nature as physics. So physics also deals with study of nature and by nature don't go by literal meaning like you are seeing some scenery of lush green fields, mountains, clouds, raining that that is not nature. Nature means what what's happening around us everywhere that is called as nature. All the phenomena which are happening in nature, all the phenomena which are happening around you so, st physics is a study of all the phenomena which are happening around us. Around us, anything which is around us is called as nature and all the phenomena which are happening, they are called as natural phenomena. Without any intervention, they are happening automatically like we have lightning, we have thunderstorms, we have rains. We receive heat from sun, light travels, there is darkness, there is light is there, sound is there, you are able to hear sound. So all these phenomena which are taking place, it's raining. So these phenomena which can be seen, which can be observed and which can be replicated in laboratory, you can perform various experiments. So all the natural phenomena and you can replicate them and you can conduct different experiments the study of those phenomena is also called as physics. So physics means everything which you do, that is physics. And there is nothing to worry about or there is nothing to fear about physics. In fact, physics is like you observe the things and you ask the questions. Why light is behaving in a particular way? Why you are not able to see in darkness? Why you are able to see only when light is there? Why you are able to hear sound? Why you cannot see anything which is obscured but you can hear the sound? Anything which is happening around you? Why you feel certain object as heat? Why such temperatures are different? Why some objects are moving and at different speeds, different directions? Why they are changing the directions? Anything which is happening around you? You simply ask the questions. You dry the clothes and water is disappeared. Evaporation is taking place. Why it is happening? All these questions you ask and that is physics. And generally what happens is that student will think about physics in terms of remembering few things. These questions which are happening, these questions you should be asking in day to day life. What many students do? they think that they should refer to certain page or paragraph in the textbook. If suppose you download some game on Play Store, Android game, nobody is there to teach you those games. You learn them automatically. In the same way, physics means what is happening around you. You did not refer to a book or you did not refer to a particular page or paragraph where you can seek the answers for the questions and you remember them till the exam date. Simple things, whenever you go to new place, new city, you can still find the directions, you, ne you never get lost. So you are more talented, you are fabulously talented. 
everyone has excellent IQ and physics is that only. How you deal with a new Android game which you download, same thing is about physics. If physics was Android game, it would have been very interesting and everybody would have loved it. But what happens, you take physics as an academic course and therefore some, you feel some difficulties in understanding physics. But physics is really interesting, physics is fun thing, physics is everything which is happening around you, that is physics. Now for example now, suppose you are listening to this class on your television set, you are on the sofa in your hall of your house and you are listening here. So here is the TV and you are listening and here is the sofa which you are observing from and here you are seeing classroom TV. And while observe, while, uh, so you are here and what you will say, you are at rest. So you are observing and you are at rest and suddenly what you feel is that you should be jotting down some notes, some interesting facts, something you should note down. So what you do, you get up from here and you want to fetch a notebook. So what happens, you go where you have kept the notebook in the shelf or in the uh, drawer somewhere, so you move about. So you were at rest, now you are moving. And you bring the book. So now, this simple thing which is happening with you and which is happening continuously around you, that is what we are studying in physics. Is there anything uh, special about it? Only thing is that, suppose you are asked the question. So you are moving. So what is special about that? You are at rest. What is special about that? How can you define that you are at rest? How can you define that you are moving? That is physics. And which is happening round the clock around you. So suppose this is one of the example. Now let us take another example. You are in the school, you are in school canteen and you are uh, on the table, you are uh, waiting for your friend is uh, fetching some order from the canteen. So your friend is at the counter of the canteen. So this is the counter and your friend is here and you are here waiting. So your friend is going to fetch some order. So now, again now, as give, in a given time, what is happening? You are observing and on that basis, you are going to say, what is rest and what is when the object is moving. Now here, you say that your friend is at rest when your friend is standing near the counter waiting for the order to be finished. Now your friend takes the order and moves towards you. So here, your friend was at rest, now your friend is moving now. This is a simple question. How do you characterize? How do you explain that your friend was at rest? And then how do you explain that your friend is moving? That is simple. Now, if whichever way you want to reply to this question, you want to answer this question, that's okay. Now, you need not think that in the textbook what is written, what page it is written, and let's refer to that, and let's repeat that verbatim. That's not the thing with physics. You try whichever way you want to reply, whichever way you want, you want to answer this question. Now let's get some answers from you. So your friend is moving now. So how do you say, how do you explain that your friend is moving? You can think of any explanation. Don't think that it will be wrong or it will be unscientific. So let's hear from you. So what you are saying? If something, if any object is moving, then its position changes, its place changes, that's correct. Simply in layman's uh, language, you try to answer this. So what is happening? Position or place is changing. Position or place of the object is changing. Then we say that that object is moving. Now how do you say that the position or place is changing? Suppose you want to explain it more in more detail, 
how do you say that the position or place of the object has changed? So your friend was near a counter and for example, you were now observing the TV, you were watching the TV, classroom TV you were ob uh, watching and you were on the sofa and suddenly you, you went to fetch your book. So again your position and place was changing. Your place changed, your position changed with respect to let us say this sofa. Your friend's position changed with respect to the counter of the canteen. And with time, you are whatever time you are observing. So let us that is called as in a given time. In a given time, if the position or place changes with respect to something, now you will say that your friend was near the counter, now he is little away from the counter. So you are describing the position or place with respect to something so that it is more understandable. So that is physics, there is nothing technical, everything which is happening around you, you are explaining it in your own words, that is physics, simple. So when the position or place of any object changes, so it changes with respect to, with respect to something, that something what you can say with respect to surrounding, whatever might be there in the surrounding, if the position or place of the object changes with respect to the surrounding or you can say with respect to observer, now you are observing your friend. So your friend was away from you at the counter, now your friend is approaching you, coming near to you, so with respect to you, you become the observer or surrounding or any reference this counter becomes reference, this sofa becomes reference, a building can become reference, a tree can become reference, anything, anything in the surrounding can be taken as reference, can be taken as observer, can be taken as the standard. So if the position or place of any object changes with respect to the surrounding, we say that the object is moving, right? So this was really easy. If same question was asked to you without mentioning physics, then you would have explained it much better than what I am explaining. That is your caliber, that is your abilities, potential is there. So, but remove physics from the mind and what is happening around you, you try to explain that and that becomes itself physics. So, whenever the position or place of the object changes, with respect to the surrounding, we say that the object is moving or the object is in motion. So any moving object, any moving object can be said to be in motion, but there again there is a catch and that is what we are going to see now. So that is one part, now the another part is when you were watching classroom TV on your sofa and your friend was standing near the counter to fetch the order from the canteen. At that time, you said that you are at rest, your friend is at rest. Now how do you define that? How do you explain it? That is the question now. Now here again, buy one get one free. Physics is like that, unlimited offers are there. In physics you understand one thing, you automatically understand many other things. That is the fun, that is the beauty that is the ease of understanding physics. Already you have defined what is a moving object, exactly opposite of that will be object at rest. So how did you define object which is moving or the object which is in motion when its position changes continuously? Simply you say if the position does not change with respect to the surrounding then the object will be at rest, really simple is not it? So rest and motion, so we are talking today about motion and rest. What happens when the object moves? What is the special thing when the object is at rest? And the definition of this, what we define right now, is that universally true? Can anybody contest that? Suppose you said, this is the definition of a moving object, this is the definition of the object at rest and somebody uh, makes a counter claim to that. Is it possible? Now let us check out. 
So we were inside the room, we were inside the canteen. Now let's take a stroll outside in a car. So you are moving in a car now. And this is where you are before and this is where you are after. So this is before and this is after. So you can say that you are moving and now already you know how to define object in motion. So you will say that the position of the car changed with respect to the tree and therefore the car is in motion. But now at the same time when you are observing, you are inside the car and you are looking outside, what you feel is that the tree has moved in this direction. You are moving in this direction and you feel that tree is moving in the opposite direction. So is the tree at rest or is the tree in motion? So that question again can be explained. The position of the tree with respect to its surrounding, is it changing? Look at the surrounding, there are hills are there, ground is there, bushes, shrubs are there. The position of tree is not changing with respect to them even as time passes by. So therefore, tree is definitely at rest. So tree is at rest, whereas the position of the car is continuously changing with respect to the surrounding. So therefore, car is in motion. Although whenever you are moving in a train or bus or car and you look outside, you feel that the objects around you are, are moving in opposite direction. So that is the illusion. Objects appear to move in opposite direction. So are they moving then? Somebody says that Are, we felt that uh, the pole is moving in opposite direction. For that, you can give this explanation. The position of the pole is not changing with respect to surrounding. Therefore, trees, poles, these mountains, they are at rest. Whereas, if actually the position or place of the object changes with respect to the surrounding, then the object is said to be moving or the object is said to be in motion. So therefore, we have to define motion and rest with respect to something. So this, when you define something with respect to something, that is called as relative. So motion and rest have to be defined relative to something, relative to surrounding, relative to the observer, anything. And in this way, because of this definition now, some, you can see here now this train when the train is moving, you will feel that these poles and other things are moving in opposite direction. But as you can see, their positions are not changing, but the position of this train is changing continuously with respect to the surrounding. Therefore, the train is said to be in motion, whereas these other objects, this signal, this uh, bridge, they are at rest. So body is said to be in state of motion if its position changes continuously with respect to the surroundings in given time or reference or the observer. Now we have used these terms here, surroundings, reference and observer because in different textbooks they have used different terminology. Surroundings is same, reference is same, observer is same. But this is the simple definition. Similarly, the definition of object at rest, here is the definition. If its position does not change with the surroundings in given time, reference or observer in given time. So therefore, we say that rest and motion both are relative. The so When you are in a car, other things appear to move, but they are actually at rest and the car exactly is in motion. So we can say that tree is at rest and car is moving. Now here, one particular thing because of this definition. Now why did we arrive at this definition? Because when you were moving in the car, you felt that other objects are also moving in opposite direction and therefore we arrived at that definition. But because of this definition now, a particular thing will arise now. So let us study that also. So here is a car, it is moving on this road as you can see and there is a house is there and this is a gate of the house is there. And the car which was here now, the car has come here. So this is before and this is after. 
So, we have observed this and on this observation there is a list of questionnaire is there and let us solve that questionnaire. So, here first question the distance between the driver and the car changes or not you have to reply this whether the distance between the driver of the car and the car itself changes it does not change. So, you can say the distance does not change the distance between the car and the gate of the house does it change or not it changes. There is no change in the position of the gate of the house with respect to the surrounding gate of the house with respect to the surrounding it does not change then there is no change in the position of the car with respect to its surrounding it changes. So, this question now so here one thing is this the distance between driver and car does it change or not. So, we are talking about driver of the car now you can be driving the car driver and car. So, one thing you can say that car is definitely moving, but what about the driver inside it and let us say now you are there your friend is driving the car and you are also there inside the car. So, with the driver and passengers so their position with respect to car and their position with respect to each other. So, it is not changing is it changing it is not changing at all. So, what can you say driver is at rest or driver is in motion driver is moving or driver is at rest that is the question. So, driver and passenger whether they are at rest or in the drivers and passengers you are traveling in your school bus and you have been told that you should not make any noise you should not create any disturbance. So, you should take your seat and you should not move about you have been clearly told by the school administration what happens are you at rest or are you moving because someone who observes you from outside the bus you are moving. So, you are moving in school bus and inside you are at rest. So, with respect to your classmates you are at rest inside the school bus, but the school bus itself is moving. So, your parents who had come to drop you in the school in the bus what they see you are moving away from them. So, simultaneously you are at rest as well as you are in motion. So, this can happen now here again driver and passenger of this car are they at rest or are they in motion. So, simple answer for you is that with respect to what if the driver uh, is uh, with respect to passenger then driver is at rest. So, driver with respect to passenger driver with respect to passenger and vice versa passenger with respect to driver you with respect to your classmates in the school bus and vice versa your classmate with respect to you in the school bus they may be at rest you may be at rest with respect to them, but with respect to the people who are outside the bus with respect to the surroundings which are outside the bus you are in motion. So, simultaneously you are at rest as well as you are in motion. So, therefore, a object can be at rest and it can be in motion for two different observers for different surroundings. So, this is the interesting thing here this is like a puzzle. So, here you can see now you are at rest on the sofa you are observing classroom TV and you are enjoying it and you are thinking about recommending classroom TV to your friends and so that you they will also benefit. But what happens when you are at rest now you say that you know the definition of rest also, but some aliens are observing you some extraterrestrial beings they are in their spacecraft or maybe they are on Mars or some planet anywhere they are there and through their special uh, binoculars or telescopes or special uh, gadgets they are observing you. So, what they see is that earth is rotating earth is also revolving around the sun. So, they will see you that you are moving. So, with respect to those aliens or extraterrestrials 
with respect to the aliens. So, you are you are in motion whereas, with respect to surroundings in your house. So, you are at rest simultaneously therefore, we say that rest and motion are relative terms with respect to someone. So, relative now why do we use the term relative here? Now, in your family and in your neighborhood so many people are there. So, what to some you will call uncle, some you will call daddy, some you will call brother, some you will call uh, whatever relations which are there or friends or neighbors. So, different people are related to you in different way and those relations keep on changing. So, therefore, this term is relative. So, with respect to your uncle you are nephew, with respect to your father you are son, with respect to your sister you are brother, you are the same person, but with respect to different relatives they will they will refer to you differently. Therefore, this term is called as relative rest and motion anything which depends upon observer and as the observer changes that thing also changes that is called as relative. Now, east and west you are standing in front of the mirror and your right hand is east for a mirror that will be west. So, in this way observer changes a thing also changes that is called as relative. So, rest and motion they are relative. Rest and motion are relative, they depend upon observer. So, rest and motion depend on observer. If the observer changes, therefore, it is called as relative. If the observer changes, if the surrounding changes, then the same object which you were saying to be at rest, now you were you are at rest till you now you are even now you are at rest but the aliens are saying you are not at rest. You are saying that you are at rest, but the aliens are saying you are not at rest. So, who is correct here? You are correct or aliens are correct or both of you are correct? Both of you are correct. You are at rest also and you are moving also and therefore, rest and motion is called as relative. We are continuously moving rotating earth is rotating about the axis earth is revolving. So, in this so this is called as frame of reference. So, any surrounding is also called as frame of reference. Your house is one frame of reference, your hall is one frame of reference in that frame of reference you are at rest. Earth when looked from outside itself become one frame of reference in that frame of reference you are in motion. So, rest and motion are also defined on frame of reference and frame of reference is nothing but in what surrounding you are talking about your hall has become frame of reference, the road becomes frame of reference, the bus school bus which you are traveling that becomes a frame of reference. So, surroundings are called as frame of reference and as the surroundings will change then the definition will also change. So, here you can see now this all these passengers are at rest with respect to each other, but for outside people they are moving. So, simultaneously they are at rest. Now, this train itself is one frame of reference, train itself is one surrounding and outside of the train is another surrounding and that is another frame of reference. In this frame of reference all these passengers are at rest and with respect to that frame of reference they are in motion simultaneously this, this is these are relative terms. Same thing here now simple question for you with respect to what they are at rest and with respect to what they are moving this is a simple question for you. Now, again and again we are not going to repeat the definition now we are asking you a question tell us with respect to what this girl is at rest and with respect to what she is moving and with respect to what this boy 
in a balloon is at rest and with respect to what it is moving this is a simple question for you have a look take a look again now carefully and now you have to list out all the things with respect to which they are at rest and all the things with respect to which they are moving that's a simple question for you and we know already you have answered it so keep it up bravo again same here with respect to person a person c and b are moving and with respect to each other they are at rest with respect to the surrounding they are moving but with respect to each other they are at rest so we say these are all relative terms there is no such thing as absolute rest or absolute motion they are relative so nothing in this universe can be said to be at absolute rest or absolute motion a body may be at rest with respect to one set of surroundings that is frame of reference and at the same time it is in motion with respect to another set of surrounding thus the motion is said to be relative with respect to the observer remember this no object can be said to be at absolute rest and no object can be said to be in absolute motion these are relative terms so now we have understood about motion and rest now what we are going to do is that we want to understand more about what type of like we what happens when the object begins to move what more we can how more we can define them what practical use we can make out of that and that we are going to see now first of all now when you are moving then your place will change so your place and position changes so place or position changes then what happens now again now uh, consider the example your friend was standing at the counter of the canteen and now he has taken the order and he is now coming towards you so what happens now so he begins to move but there are many other people are there many tables chairs are there so what will happen your friend will move and accordingly wherever the empty space is there your friend will take that and come towards you so what is happening your friend is taking some path whenever you went to search your notebook so what happens when you, you didn't find your notebook at the shelf then you went some other place in this way the path which you took was changing whenever the object moves it takes certain path whenever object moves it takes certain path so moving objects moving objects always they take some path and what type of path they take accordingly can we say something about their motion let's check it out like suppose you are moving in a circular path you are moving you are moving in a straight path you are moving in some other zigzag path so can we define something related to that related to the path so motion and path what is the relationship what more we can understand about that let's check out so types of motion accordingly what path you are taking when you are moving what path you are taking while moving that gives rise to types of motion the motion of all the objects are not of the same type now see here why we are uh, classifying this why we are categorizing this this is always this comes handy now in your rack in your shelf how will you arrange your books notebooks at one particular place textbooks at one particular place scrap books at one particular place reference book at one particular place you will arrange them properly what happens if you don't arrange them properly then it becomes difficult for you if you want to search something you want to look at a physics textbook now and everything is jumbled so what will happen it becomes time consuming it becomes irritating to avoid that what you do you you organize your almira or where you are keeping your academic things that is called as categorizing things same way we are doing here nothing uh, 
something like, oh, this is so technical, it's getting so technical, you know, it's not the thing. Simple thing, whatever path you are taking, on that basis, you are categorizing the motion. So, types of motion, different paths which you take. Suppose you are moving in straight line. Line, straight line. Line means linear. Whenever you are moving in a straight line, that is called as linear. And you can, when you move like this, this is called as rectilinear. So, straight line, it is linear or rectilinear dip, depending upon the path. Now, you look at the hands of the clock, they are moving, their position is continuously changing with respect to the surrounding. Inside the clock itself, these numbers which are there, which tell you the time, with respect to these numbers, the position of the minute hand, second hand and hour hands in the clock the hands keep on moving, their position changes, but what path they are taking while changing the position? They take circular path, so therefore we say this is a circular motion. Now this is a football which is rolling on the ground, so it is taking a straight path, but it is rotating about its own axis. So, such a motion is called as rotational motion and look at the pendulum of the clock. Pendulum of the clock, it moves to and fro and it keeps on repeating this motion after specific time interval that is called as periodic motion. Like after 12 hours we have day and after 12 hours we have night. Seasons, after every 3-4 months there is a change in season, this keeps on happening with same time interval, any type, anything which repeats itself after fixed time, anything which repeats itself after fixed time, that is called as periodic. So, in a pendulum, you will see that the pendulum moves to the extreme left and then moves to the extreme right after fixed time interval. So, such a motion is called as periodic motion. Now, in a periodic motion, again, now this is a particular definition of periodic motion, but the periodic motion can be circular, periodic motion can be linear, periodic motion can be rotational. You have to understand the difference between them. So, periodic circular motion. Now, every 60 second, the minute uh, second hand keeps on repeating the same thing. So, it is circular also and periodic also. After 60 minutes, the minute hand repeats the same motion which is circular. So, the movement of the hands in the clock are circular also and they are periodic also. It need not be periodic or it need not be circular. So, this depending upon the path, we are classifying the types of motion. So, path now straight path, translational motion and now here translational motion we are going to study in detail and here we have a rectilinear and curvilinear. Now, translational and later on we are going to see pendulum also and we are going to see circular and rotational motion also. First, we will begin with translational motion. So, try to understand whenever we talk about transistor, transformer, something which changes from this to that that is called as translation. Now, here again we say in languages translate this. So, translate this means what? We translate something from one language to another language that is called as translation. So, in physics also when something is changing from this to that, that to that something else that is called as translation. Now, but the meaning does not change. When you are translating something from one language to another language, meaning does not change us. remember that. So, in physics, how we are going to use that term translation in motion, let us check out and then what is rectilinear and what is curvilinear. First, let us emphasize on translational motion. So, we understood translation means what? Something which transforms without changing. So, 
the motion possessed by the body moving along a straight path is called as rectilinear motion. Now, as you can see, it can be vertical straight line. Whenever the object is moving in straight line, now straight line can be inclined, straight line can be horizontal, straight line can be vertical or straight, li straight line can be inclined. As you can see here, straight line, straight line need not always be horizontal, straight line can be vertical also or it can be inclined also. So, when the path is straight line path, at that time it is called as rectilinear linear motion. But now we want to talk about translational motion. So, these first of all you understand this straight line apple has fallen from the tree to the ground. Now, the students on the your uh, school function annual day or republic day or whatever. So, you may have taken part in this. So, you will always move in a straight line. Nobody will move out of the straight line always that discipline you will maintain. You have seen on uh, 26 January how our brave soldiers they will march past saluting our uh, proud uh, uh, tricolor flag. So, they will always move in a straight line. Now, but what is happening when object moves in straight line? Now, let us check out that. So, here look at this bus here before and after. So, bus is here at signal at position A and afterwards it is at position B and it has moved along the straight line. As you can see, it has moved along the straight line. Forget about the path here, but here what has happened when the bus has moved from A to B, every part of the bus has experienced same type of motion. Every part has been translated from A to B. There is no change in translation. There is a change from one form to another, but the meaning does not change. Remember that everything remains same, but the, from this state to that state, this language to that language without change in the meaning. So, here translation means that bus was here at A and bus has gone at B, but nothing in the bus has changed. Everything which was there, the bus which was at A, the bus is same at B. So, this is called as translational motion. Every object, the wheels, the steerings, the passengers, the seats, the luggage part there, everything of the bus, the door, the windows, everything had the same change. So, bus got translated from A to B. Such a motion is called as translatory motion. You understood the meaning of this? Everything has changed. The, the distance between the wheels has remained the same. Distance between the windows has remained the same. The distance between the seats has remained the change. Only thing is that the bus was at A, now the bus is at B. Such a motion is called as translational motion. Now, in this translational motion, what path the object is taking? Now, the object can take. Now, remember uh, when you, uh, you will say that circular motion and rotational motion which are there, that we will discuss in detail because when we are talking about circular motion or rotational motion, every part of the object does not behave in the same way. Here every part of the bus is behaving exactly in the same way. That does not happen when we are talking about circular or rotational motion. Therefore, translatory motion can be of moving in straight line or so let us check out what are the different types of translational motion. So, here soldiers marching in a parade. What is the path of motion? Now, look uh, is it translational or not? Every soldier has moved from one place to another place. Nothing has changed. The distance between the soldiers has not changed. Nothing, nothing at all has changed. So, and what path they have taken? Straight line or curved line? They have taken straight line. So, is it translational motion or not? Yes, it is a translational motion. And is it a straight line? Yes, it is a straight line. So, therefore, such a motion is called as rectilinear motion. Now, car taking a turn on the road. So, when the car takes a turn, the path will be something like this or 
everything about the car remains the same but what is the path so it is a uh, translational motion the car is in translational motion but what about the path it is a curved line path so that will be curvilinear motion so we are talking about rectilinear we are talking about curvilinear and stone dropped from certain height every part of the stone every atom every molecule every particle of the stone is undergoing same motion and stone which is dropped from one height and it reaches the ground the stone remains the same stone but what path it has taken straight line so it is a translational motion and it is a rectilinear motion so we will continue this discussion this interesting topic now remember physics is not something to be afraid of physics is not something to be wary of physics is what's happening right in front of you at this very moment you simply ask the questions or someone ask you the questions and you try to reply them without referring to the textbook because it's all there in your brains remember you download a new android game nobody teaches you how to play that game you yourself become master of that game same is about physics physics is like android game which is happening in front of you every moment so on this note it's goodbye to all of you till we meet next time